Let's go and get started today. And let me just say a prayer for you. We've been talking about the truth. We've been talking about the word, the importance of placing the word first and foremost in our lives. Father God, I pray for each one that you've drawn to this video by your spirit. I pray that the eyes of their understanding be open, that you give them a spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of you. Help them to see the truths of your word and to see to receive revelation knowledge, not from things I say, but Holy Spirit, I thank you. You're our teacher, our guide, our counselor, and you will lead them into all truth in the word of God. And I just give you praise and glory, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So in the last video, we continued on looking at the word being truth. I've said to you several times that for a Christian, we must learn to, to delineate between the world's facts and God's truth. There is a big drift difference. It may be factual, but that does not make it truth because truth is the word of God for the Christian. Our only source of truth is the word of God. It's not theological education. It's not theology. It's not religious tradition. It is the word of God. Jesus said the traditions of men make the word of no effect. The traditions of men make the truth of no effect. Tradition will steal the power of God from you. Tradition will keep you from walking in the fullness of everything God has for you. We can hold on to our traditions or we can challenge them with the word of God. I personally do not want to hold on to any belief or any concept that I've developed over the years of walking with God that are not scripturally founded. I'm willing to challenge everything that I believe with this word. Every time I open it, every time I study it, I'm asking the Holy Spirit to show me any, anything that is holding me back, anything that is making his word, his truth of no effect in my life. But as we talked about in the last video, we must learn to be satisfied with the word of God. In the Old Covenant, Israel in the desert for 40 years, God provided for them. He provided the manna on a day-by-day -day basis. They had provision from God, but it was not enough. They asked for more. They were not satisfied with what God had given them. God has given us his word. His word. Jesus is the word made flesh. He has given us his truth. We've seen in John chapter 17, Jesus said, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy truth is your word. But are we satisfied? That was the question I was asking last time. Are we satisfied with the word of God? I remember when I first went to Bible college, they would have services, and at the end of service, they would call anybody who needed healing up for prayer. Well, the church that I came from did not do those things. I was suffering from something. I can't remember if it was a cold or whatever it was. The first time I heard them have an altar call, and I thought, well, can't hurt to try, so I'll go up and try. They prayed for me, and I was healed instantly. And I thought, well, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen, I've ever experienced. All I have to do is, if I get any type of symptoms, just wait for service and go for prayer. First couple of months of being in Bible school, sitting under the Word for four hours a day, if I had any type of symptom, I'd just run to the altar and get prayed for. But I started to notice something. Over a period of time, the healing manifested did manifest instantaneously. It started taking time. And then I noticed that when they would pray for me, I was not receiving at all. What was happening? I had never been exposed to it. So God in his mercy would release his healing power. But then I sat under the word, under the truth, four hours a day, five days a week, studying, meditating on the word. God expected me to start walking in that faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God is what Paul tells us in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. He tells us in Romans chapter 12 and verse 3 that God has dealt to each one of us the measure of faith. My ability to perceive, to walk in that faith was growing, and God was expecting me to walk in that faith, not to walk from prayer to prayer, to, from experience to experience. But over time, I wasn't satisfied. 
I didn't understand it in my immaturity. I was always seeking another experience, another touch. If I heard somebody holding a heard of somebody holding a service in another church, and people being touched by the power of God, I would go to that service. And so many of us are guilty of that, running from service to service, looking for a shortcut. God has called us to walk by faith and not by sight. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith does not exist separate from the Word of God. God has called us to walk by His Word and not by the input of our five physical senses. God has called us to walk by His Word and not by a touch from the Holy Spirit. Are we satisfied with the Word, though? Are we satisfied with God's provision? We've seen in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, Peter or I apologize, Second Peter chapter 1, Peter told his readers, God has provided us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that loved us, through his truth. In the word of God, we have the provision for every need. But are we satisfied or are we seeking something more? We saw in the last video, John chapter 14 and verse 8, where Philip said unto the Lord, show us the Father and it suffice us. And the thing you see in his statement, Philip had walked with Jesus for three to three and a half years. Philip had experienced the glory, the presence, the power of the Spirit. Philip had seen the lame walk. He'd seen the blind eyes open. He'd seen the deaf hear. He'd seen the devils cast out. He was there for the demoniac of the Gadarenes deliverance. He had experienced all that. And here, just hours before Jesus' arrest, he looks Jesus in the eye. It says, it's not enough. Show us the Father. You're not enough. Show us the Father. Is the word enough for you? Jesus said the word is the seed. We cast the seed into the ground of our soul. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 that we're not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Transformation of our mind, our soul, is required for us to walk in the fullness of everything God has provided for us. But is it enough? It will take time to, to be meditating in the Word. You have to shut off television shows. You'll need to walk away from events. You'll need to walk away from different things. But what priority do you have in your life? Are you running from experience to experience, looking for another touch from God? Or are you willing to be satisfied with the word, the manna that God has laid out before you. In Psalm chapter 23, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We look all around us. We see the shadow of death, sickness, disease. Society seems to be falling apart, crumbling around us. Sin abounds all around us. We are walking through that valley. But he didn't tell us to stop and camp. He told us to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And then in the middle, and then he tells us in Psalm 23, he has set a table before us. What is that table? The table is his word. He has set a table before us. In his word is provision for everything that we could ever need for life or godliness. In his word are the seeds that we need for anything that we'll ever desire in our lives. But so many of us are just like Philip. We're not satisfied with what God has set before us. We would rather have a touch and experience so that we could go about our lives. In Colossians chapter 3, Paul told his readers, set your mind on things above because you've been risen with Christ. In Ephesians chapter 2, we see that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. He sent the Holy Spirit to be our guide, to lead us into all truth. The truth is the word. He sets a table before us. That table is found in his word. But are we satisfied with the table he set? Or do we want something more? Do we want to have an experience, a touch, to live from miracle to miracle? And I've said in the previous videos, miracles are crisis-focused. Jesus did not tell his disciples, receive a healing and declare the kingdom of God is here. He told his disciples, heal the sick, cast out devils, cleanse the lepers, and then say the kingdom of God is here. The miraculous is what we're supposed to be walking in. We're not supposed to be looking for a miracle. We're supposed to be walking in divine health. We're supposed to be walking in divine prosperity. We're supposed to be walking in the goodness of God 
and then ministering the goodness of God. And in the healings, the miracles, the signs and wonders, declaring to the lost who are receiving those things, the kingdom of God is here. But instead, we are not satisfied with the word, with the table that God has set before us because it takes time out of our schedule. We're busy. We have distractions. We have things pulling us away from the words. We ask for a touch. We ask for the Holy Spirit to give us more. But as I said in the last video, he has filled us with the fullness of the Spirit. Where is he going to get more? We have all of the Holy Spirit that we could. There is. The world is waiting for an outflowing. We have the presence. We have the same power that raised Jesus from the dead within our spirit. It says in Romans chapter 8. But we have got to learn to walk in what has been provided to us. How do we get to that point? We get to that point by getting in the Word and spending time. Are we willing to spend a few hours a day just meditating on the truths of God's Word? Or is it just something we prefer that we say that's not enough for us? We want a touch. We want something more. I said in the last video, in John chapter 14 and verse 12, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. We focus on the greater works, but we're not doing the works of Jesus. What are the works of Jesus? To teach, to preach, to heal. Jesus taught more than he preached. He preached more than he healed. We're focused on what are the greater works, but do you see the works of Jesus being done? Do you see the lepers being cleansed? Do you see the dead being raised? Do you see the deaf hearing, the blind seeing, the lame walking on a normal basis? For Christianity, that is the norm. But why are we not seeing it? Jesus said in Mark chapter 16 that the believing ones, those who believe, they'll cleanse the, they'll cleanse the lepers, they'll cast out devils, they'll speak with new tongues, they will heal the sick. What was the qualification? To believe. How do we believe? A belief is a firm persuasion based upon knowledge, confidence. As we walk in the words, we spend time fellowshipping in the Holy Spirit, we develop confidence. We develop confidence in a relationship and we go and grow in our ability to walk in the faith of the Son of God. But it takes time in the Word of God. It takes time alone, spending time with the Word open, meditating on the truths of God's Word. And I'm not talking about Oh, I have to read 10 chapters a day or two chapters a day or this or that. Sometimes you may only have one verse and you spend hours just looking at that one verse, meditating on it, letting the Holy Spirit minister the truth of the word. The word of God is the truth of God. That's where Jesus said, sanctify them, cleanse them through thy truth. Thy, tr thy word is truth. That's what John was saying to his readers. I have no greater joy than to see you walking in truth. Carol and I have no greater joy than to, than to see your comments and hear how the Holy Spirit is teaching you and you're learning how to walk in the truth of God's Word. But unfortunately, many of us are just like Philip. We're not satisfied with the feast, the table that God has set before us. We want something more. We want an experience, a touch from the Holy Spirit. We want, and I'm not saying this, I'm not discounting that. I'm not saying that there won't be experience. I'm not saying there won't be times when the Holy Spirit will touch you and you'll experience the miraculous. God does those things. But is that what we're seeking, or are we going to be satisfied with the Word of God? Are we satisfied with the table that God has set before us in His Word? That's what Peter was telling us in 2 Peter chapter 1. Grace and peace are multiplied to you through the knowledge of Him that loved you. Many people today in the church are, are living without peace in their life. They pray for peace. They come to services asking you to pray for them that they would receive peace. But Peter did not tell us that peace comes from prayer. It comes from truth. It comes from the Word of God, spending time. If you do not have peace in your life, it's a lack of knowledge. It's a lack of revelation knowledge of the Word of God. We are limiting God's ability to do the miraculous in our lives by limiting our time in the Word. The Word of God is the seed of God. We must sow it into our souls. We must allow it to, re to transform us. To, we must allow ourselves to be renewed by the word of God as we spend time. And yes, it may take us, we may have to sit alone hour after hour with the TV off, you know, away from our families, putting time in the word of God, if that's what's necessary. But the key is to be led by the spirit of God. 
there may be one scripture that he ministers to me and I spend time ministering with that and a different scripture to you. There's not a formula to this. But the one consistency of it all is seek ye first the kingdom of God. How do you do that? By seeking first his word. His word is truth. The bedrock, the foundation of our lives must be in that truth. That's what the psalmist was telling us. We walk through the valley of the shadow of death. In Mark chapter 4, when we look at the parable of the sower, we see that the afflictions, the trials come for the word's sake, for the truth's sake. The enemy will come trying to steal that word. When he came to Eve in the garden at the first temptation, what was his question? Has God said? That is the temptation. Has God said? Is the word truth? Is it really working? Is the seed really growing? Is it really transforming me? Is it really bringing life and health, as Proverbs tells us in chapter 4, to all of our flesh? Is it working? That question nags at us. And I know what it's like to have something that you're standing for for a long time, long periods of time. But if you continue to see sow the Word of God, you will see a continuous harvest of the Word of God. That's why Jesus said, continue in my Word, and you will be my disciples in my indeed. If you continue to sow the seed, you will continue to experience the harvest of His Word. The Word of God is the seed of God. As we plant the Word within our soul and allow the Word to time to grow, as we water it by praying over it, by nourishing it with with prayer, we will see it grow. But it takes time. First the ear, then first the blade, then the ear, then the full fruit in a season. But is that enough for you? Are you going to be satisfied with the process that God has placed before you? He set a table before you. He set a feast. We see that his word, he sent his word and healed all of our diseases is what we're told. His word is truth. Are we satisfied with that? Or are we going to have to live an unstable Christian life, running from meeting to meeting, hoping for that word from God, that prophecy, that anointing, that touch, that changes everything, that shortcuts our need to get in the word. His word is truth. And we go back as we've come to the end of this video today. I just want to look at something. And we're going to pick this up in the next video, in Psalm chapter 78. We'll start in verse 35. It says, They remembered that God was their rock and the high God their Redeemer. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth and lied to him with their tongues, for their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. The covenant being the word. They were not steadfast in his word, in his promises. If you go through the verse, I mean, through the chapter, you're going to see It talks about the different miracles, the things that God did for them in the wilderness, but they weren't satisfied. He provided manna for them on a day-by-day basis, but they weren't satisfied. They wanted more. They wanted meat. They wanted this and that. They weren't satisfied with what God was giving them. They were serving him with their lips, but not with their heart. Many Christians are in the same place. Many Christians are just not satisfied with him. That's why they run from meeting to meeting. Because he's not enough for them. They want something more. They want to have an experience. They want to have feelings in their, in their natural being. But the Bible tells us we walk by faith and not by the input of our five physical senses. It goes on, but he being full of compassion forgave their iniquity, destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passes away and cometh not again. How often did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? We're talking about people living under the old covenant, living under his judgment and mercy before Jesus came. But even in the age of the law, the age of judgment, it says he remembered that they were but flesh. God understands us. He has mercy for us and he will do miraculous things. And a lot of times you'll look at somebody that receives something from God and you wonder, well, they're not doing what they need to do. God meets you where you're at. He doesn't expect you to you know, make 100% on every test. We're going to make mistakes. The key is, are we continuing to press in? Are we continuing to push forward? Are we continuing to pick ourselves up and move forward? Or are we just serving him with lips only? But our hearts are focused on natural things. What is first in our life? And I want to close out with this verse. Psalm 78, 41, and we'll pick up at the next one. It says, Yea, they turned back and tempted God, and limited 
the holy wood of Israel. In context, talking about his covenant, his covenant to the Old Testament saints was his word. They turned back from his covenant. They turned back from his word and limited him. Did you know that a lack of attention on the word of God, if we're not putting the word of God first in our life, if we're not spending time walking in truth, as John told his readers, that we are limiting God's ability to work in our lives. Many of us run from meeting to meeting, hoping for a touch from God, and I'm not discounting that. God does in his mercy sometimes touch us, and sometimes we have experiences. Those things happen, and they are real. But if that is our focus, are we serving him with our lips only, or are we satisfied with the feast, the table that he set before us in his word? His word is truth. It is through his word that he sanctifies us. And that's why Paul said in Romans chapter 12, in verse 2, to be transformed by the renewing, by the saving of your soul. If you have believed in your heart, you've accepted Jesus as Lord, you are a new creation. You are spiritually just as Jesus is today. You are righteous, you are holy, you are pure. But our souls must be renewed to the truths of who we are in Christ and the new creation realities of who we are in order for us to experience the manifestation of that truth, of that reality in our outward lives. Paul said, we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by the truth of God's word. We walk by the feast God has set before us within his word and not by the input of our five physical senses. The question I ask today, are you satisfied with what he's provided you in his word? Or are you like the Israelites who have turned away from the word, seeking something more with an end result of limiting God in your life? Thank you for joining me today. Carol and I love you. We long to see you walking the truth. We put out these videos on a daily, ba on a weekly basis, wanting to see you walk in the faith of the Son of God. You can do it, but it all starts with the Word of God, sowing that Word day and night. As he told Joshua, Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, meditate upon the Word day and night, and you will make your way successful. You will make your way prosperous. But it's up to you. Are you satisfied with the feast of God's word that he has set before you? Or are you like Philip, asking for something more? Thank you for your time today. And God bless you.